Um, hey Dave, how you doing? Doing great. You hey, doing I wonder, all right? Yeah, I don't want you think I'm the smart. These are some questions Andrew had. He couldn't be on, but uh, <laughs> your bullpen. Uh, how's it shaping up? You know, going into practice now, and and we haven't heard much about Gage. We haven't talked much about him. I guess kind of how, how's he doing? What what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, first off, the bullpen's shaping up fine. Um, we have we have you know some really good arms. Yeah, obviously, they got to go out and and do it in a real game. Uh, bullpens have been great. Um, we feel like we have a really good mix of left and right heading handed pitching, which is, you know, the right handed pitching usually there. Uh, having some options left handed out of the pen is going to be uh, a big time plus for us this year. And you know, as far as Gage Wood, I mean, he had a really good fall, and you'll see is just really grown up matured um he looks he looks Never older thinks it's an eight he 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 looks older he's physically in tremendous shape and i think you'll see a, a difference there uh, but as as far as throwing the baseball he's been he's been better than he ever has been as far as some bullpen arms or some some names you could throw out for who you think is looking good right now uh yeah, I could throw some out there for you. Now, let me see here. Let me let me look at my list. So basically, uh, if you're looking for a left left on left matchup, you know uh, we have Stone Hewlett who transferred in here from Kansas. That's that's what he does. He gets lefties out. Um, you know, I, I think freshman Colin Fisher is a guy that could be a starter or a uh, a reliever out of the pen, and you know. Uh, Hunter Dietz could be a starter or a reliever. Obviously, we're going to have to wait just a little bit for him to get right. Parker Coyle, starter or reliever, um, really made a jump. So that's exciting. Tate McGuire, freshman. Gabe Gackle, freshman. McIntyre, Bobby could be a starter. Wood, Frank's back better than ever. Faraday is uh, turning the corner. I think going out and playing in Cape Cod League and throwing the ball really well, except for maybe one game uh, has really helped him. And he's a guy that uh, has super stuff, upper 90s all the time, uh, kind of easy out of his hand, throwing a breaking ball for a strike, throwing fastball for a strike. I think uh, Cooper Dawson has made a huge jump, made the team, going to be right there to help us. Christian Fouch, Dylan Carter, there you go. And and you uh, you – you mentioned Deeds. Well, what's his timeline for, I guess, getting back to practice and then when he could maybe be game ready? Well, he's already back to practice. He's doing all the drills. He's not he's not throwing uh, to hitters or anything yet. But, you know, they uh, they just went in there and took care of a problem that he brought with him. And we knew it was there, had to make a decision uh, after fall ball because he showed his first few outings how good he was at the end of fall. Well, it wasn't the same. It was still good, but it wasn't nearly nearly as good because it's pretty electric. And, uh, you know, at first it was, I'll just wait till the end of the season. I really don't want to miss any. We're like, hey, we're fine with you missing. We want you the second half. That's what really matters anyway. And uh, after realizing that this was going on as a sophomore and then it really hit him again his senior year, um, talking with his parents and advisor or whoever else and the doctor is like yeah let's just do this and he was all about it and he's way ahead of schedule so i'd say to answer your question he'll be ready uh sometime probably to go full blast in april hopefully okay early. i got a couple more about i'll turn it back to oliver thanks okay Mason. yeah coach just after watching your team in the fall and having this break what what are some of the biggest things you'd like to accomplish before opening day with position battles or whatever it may be yeah so you know just get having Stovall back um man he's been amazing i don't again fielding accuracy of his arm has been great uh getting him and uh behavior to play together play catch together every day get to know each other um, that's, that's one thing because you just want the middle infielders to just kind of know what they're doing before it happens. And, uh, you know, just getting that infield squared away, you know, we've got a little battle at first base with McLaughlin and Wagner, uh, when it's left, when it's right, one can DH, 
Wagner can actually play some outfield if we needed him to as well. Um, but that's that's uh, something that is on is going to go. It's going to be ongoing, and it's a good thing. It's healthy competition amongst teammates, and then the outfield. You know, at third base. You know, you could. You know, you got Holt over there that he's spark plug gamer, good player, uh, had a good fall, and 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 then you know with with Spray Glott who came in from Richmond. I mean, honestly, you know he's maybe our best defender, just fielding the ball. I'm not saying he's the best shortstop, uh, but as far as just fielding the ball at third and all positions combined, he's going to be a, a, an incredible utility guy, maybe an everyday starter. Um, but, uh, you know, so it's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. The outfield, you know, we've got to get that. We've got to get that maybe left field is still up there. Uh, you know, we've been playing Jason Jones out there late fall in the drill work. He's been working out there like 80% of his time, uh, a little bit at third, you know, because of, if the bat gets going, it could really help us. And, uh, you know, a lot of times left field, whether it's in summer ball or division one baseball or the big leagues about swinging the bat and uh, being a good defender, you know, to be overly, special out there if you can hit enough so that that's that's up in the air with him and Edmondson and maybe Lovich uh, Lovich was someone who missed most fall practice that's healthy now uh, left-handed hitter that transferred him from Missouri we'll see how that how that plays out um, and then Ty Wilmsmeyer in centers is our best defender um, you know you got Grimes battling and some other guys battling uh, but we'll we'll just have to see how that that all turns out I think it'll be a work in progress. If it comes down to just defense, then it'll be Wilms Meyer. I think the only position you didn't hit there was catcher, and that was going to be my next question. Is I mean, like we know it's a crowded room. Are you wanting like an everyday guy, or kind of switching out, or figure it out early in the year? Or what? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not all about not having an, an everyday guy. I think I want our players to know that. When they walk through the door, they don't have to look at the lineup most of the time. Um, I think it just makes for a better, a better player, better situation. If you earn the job, you're the best catcher, you're the best hitter, the pitcher's like thrown to you. There's a combination there. But we are very fortunate that we have. I mean, we have Parker Rollin back who started for us last year. And yeah, he didn't hit much, uh, but he caught extremely well and he, and he did a great job with our pitching staff. And then you know, you've got Hudson White who came in here from Texas Tech that was splitting time back there with a younger player. And he has made a huge jump on the defensive end. He throws well. Athletically, he could play other positions. And he was our best hitter in the fall. I mean, as far as just barreling up the ball and hitting the ball all over the field, tough out, taking walks, fouling off pitches. Um, you know, he's going to be in the lineup and uh, it'd be hard to beat it out. And, uh, you know, that, that that's a, a good problem. And then, you know, freshman Ryder Helfrich is uh, as talented a freshman catcher I've ever had. And I had James McCann in here uh, that was pretty darn good. And I've had some good ones. But, uh, you know, you think back of James, his first year was catch and throw. And then the bat came on. It really came out his junior year. And he probably led us in hitting, uh, even with those terrible bats we had to use that year. Um but Ryder has a lot, a lot more bat potential this year. And if he keeps getting better with the bat, which I'm sure he will, arm strength, receiver. Uh, he was outstanding the first five weeks of fall baseball. The last week, not so good. And uh, I don't know if he just kind of hit the wall or what happened, but uh, he's kind of hard on himself. And he's a really good player. And he just doesn't, he just needs to relax and play. But you know, I mean, you got Hudson Polk that came out and hit in the fall and caught the ball better and, you know, is a great guy, a great team guy. And we all we all feel like that one day he's going to coach at a high level and for a long time if that's what he wants to do. So, yeah, you know, you go from having two guys last year that didn't hit a whole lot, did a pretty good job behind the plate to having guys that, you know, we got four guys. And, uh you know, how do you let that happen as a coach? Well, first off, it's a good problem to have, but, you know, you you bring in a transfer guy because you, you, 
you know, you think maybe you're going to lose your freshman catcher and then he doesn't sign and, you know, welcome to our world of professional baseball draft mid July. You know, I won't go into that tirade again, but it's a, it's just, it's an issue. Tom. Tom, you there? I'm here. You know, I actually had the weather report coming up because I was going to ask you, do, does it look good to get outside tomorrow? And I'm, I'm sure you guys have been tracking this. Are you going to be able to get outside some this at the start? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, yesterday, which was uh, Wednesday, it was the first time that we've been outside and all we did was shoot fly balls and do pop-up communication. We stayed off the dirt for the most part. We didn't take any ground balls. Uh, just try to see the ball in the air because we haven't done that. And then we were hoping the rain would get out of here early on Thursday today, and it's not happening. So we're going to let the field dry again. Uh, we have the tarp on, and and we're we're going to be out there tomorrow. We're going to throw the first pitch at two o'clock. Uh, do some early work wherever we can, either on the field or in the indoor, and then come on over. You know, Saturday we're going to take Saturday off. Uh, you know, track has got the whole facility. They have that. I think three or four times a year, and this just happens to be the weekend. So it's going to rain most of the morning and mid-afternoons, cool down. Uh, we'll, we'll use that as an off day, and then we'll go back at it on Sunday. We're going to throw the first pitch at 12 noon, and then we'll scrimmage again on Monday. You know, if it had, in a perfect world, we go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we would have given a Monday off. But uh, it's supposed to be in the 60s or warm on Monday, and – Next next week looks great. So that that's that's the plan right now. Okay. Hey, your comment on Cody Frank was back better than ever. When did he get fully by? I mean, what what's his what's he looking like? He looks a hundred percent to me. You know, we you know last year he got up a pitch or two here and there. You know, ninety two. I think he might have touched ninety three. We don't expect him to pitch there. We didn't last year. I think he probably will end up getting there. But he's thrown a couple times live hitters in the indoor and uh, pretty much sliced him up because that's what he does. He doesn't, he's different. He's got an incredible change up with movement, um, works fast, field his position. He's not scared. I think he'll get a lot of innings for us if he stays healthy, and I don't know why he wouldn't, but I would say he's 100%. Now the velocity is not 100% yet, but I don't think anybody's is. All right. Hey, my last thing is, um, other than Dietz, anybody else going to be dinged up or slowed to start the year? Uh, knock on wood, not yet. But, you know, we haven't started doing anything yet as far as competing, running the bases and doing those type of things. So I'm sure something will come down the road. But we're in good we're in good shape right now um, as far as injury. So uh, hopefully we can keep it that way. Ellis? Yeah, Coach, you mentioned, you mentioned Jason Jones and just – how much upside he has and how much he could help. Uh, you know, with so much power potential that you're having to replace from last year's outfield, how important is it for someone with some pop to emerge at that spot? It just Is that something you take into account that he might have another level to tap into this year? Yeah, it's, you know, it's time. I think he's, he's ready to go um, as far as just all the outside noise, all the worries. Uh, we've, I think we've, we've, we've had some really good conversations in my office and here and there and, Coach Thompson and had good talks with him as well. It's it's just, you know, time to play. Have fun. Enjoy it. Enjoy the game. Enjoy being on a team. Um, because because when you do that, I just I think it starts to flow for you. Yeah. You you put everybody pulls for each other and 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 that's that's what I want. I want Jason to not worry about all the other things. Just play baseball. Don't worry about what somebody down south is saying or this guy is saying or it's it's time to just play baseball and enjoy it and that's probably the best way I can put it I think we've got a pretty good idea of who your top three starting pitchers might be but you know that first weekend you play four games I was just wondering is that maybe a chance for one of your younger pitchers to get a spot to show what they can do in a starting role and is you know I guess you got a few weeks to make the decision is there a little bit of a competition for that spot now yeah I would say there is um you know when we when we scheduled we thought in a perfect world due to playing the in the tournament the next weekend, if we could play on Monday or even play four through the weekend with a double header if we have to due to weather, we'll see how that turns out. Just get four games in, four starts, four different pitchers, not play Tuesday gives us 
a chance to recover some of our bullpen more, maybe heading into that tournament. Um, so, you know, I mean, yeah, it, the guys are going to get to throw the next three weekends. And if somebody really jumps out there and it's easy for us, great. Uh, I think, you know, one of the pitchers that's made a really big jump has been Bybee. He throws nothing but strikes for the most part now. Got a really good breaking ball. Now he's got a slider cutter, which he needed that other pitch. Got a good change up. Um, you know, a little older. You know, he's a guy that could take it. But then there's some of those freshmen as well. And you never know. Like I said, there might be another one of these guys jump out there before it's all said and done, uh, heading into the opening weekend. Matt. It, this weekend specifically, what are you hoping to accomplish with your team? And over these last couple of weeks of instructional workouts, has there been anything that stood out to you? Well, really this weekend to me is all about getting live at bats on a baseball field with our pitchers going, uh, running the bases because, you know, you're throwing the hitters inside. They're not running. They're just swinging. And, you know, the, the pitchers obviously have an advantage inside. It's harder to, it's harder to hit inside in, a, in an area like that. Although our guys do a good job in there, but if, you know, you know, fortunately we've replaced the lights in there uh, a year or so back and it's, it's, it's great as far as the visibility compared to what it was, but it's still not outside. It's just a different feel. Um, but yeah, really more than anything, just playing the game, but live, live at bats on the field for our hitters playing baseball. Um, that's probably the main thing, you know, and then see if the pitchers can take it, what they've been doing inside, outside. Because, uh, again, you have elements, you have wind, you have different things. The mound feels different. And, uh, I don't know, gain a little confidence. You know, all, uh, you know, the teams, I don't know if I'm going to load up a team yet or not. Um, what I mean by that is if we were playing the next day, this group might be starting. And, the guys know. I mean, these these guys are pretty smart. They can figure it out real fast. Like, hey, I should be on that team, or why am I not on that team, or or vice versa. So, uh, just playing baseball, and really the second weekend, the third weekend, we'll have to we'll have to really start making some decisions. Then this first weekend, let's just see what happens. You probably saw the College Baseball Hall of Fame announced they're going to be in Overland Park uh, beginning next year. Given that you're from the area, I wonder what your thoughts are about that and. You guys recruit Kansas City so hard. Do you think it benefits youth baseball up there in any way? Well, I think that uh, going to Overland Park, obviously I'm really familiar with Kansas City area growing up there. Um, it's a great area, number one. Uh, I just think it's a lot easier area to get to than Lubbock. And I think that the traffic, the attendance will be a lot better. And uh, I think... People will, you know, be able to go out of their way a little bit on vacation, different things to go, to go through there, the museum, and uh, I think it, I think it's a, it's a great spot, central part of the United States, booming area, uh, and it's a, it is a baseball area. You know, many years ago we used to always say that in in Missouri and the Kansas City area that St. Louis might have been the hot spot for baseball, and it's still really good, but we we feel like Kansas City area. You know, whether you're talking the Kansas side, Missouri side, north of the river or whatever, it's it's really, really come on over the last 15 years. And uh, that's where we've gone and got a lot of our players. So I think it I think it's definitely going to it'll bring a little attention to the area. Jackson. Yeah, Dave, uh, every uh, preseason poll that comes out right now it feels like it comes with a picture of Hagen Smith just what how has he been handling the hype that's come along with this junior season anything different you know mentality preparation wise just knowing there's big expectations right now yeah he's handled it really well you know we there's been years where we've had guys that were projected high picks and they stressed out over it maybe change their routine we just tell our guys just do what you do what you do every day get up, eat, go to class, come into the place, come into our building, work, don't worry about it. And it's easier said than done, but if you stick with your routine instead of thinking I got to sleep in, I'm going to miss class, it just all snowballs on you. Just do what you're supposed to do and it'll all take care of itself. And Hagen, you know, he's 20 years old, be 20 years old to the draft. 
he knows he's going to be a good draft. Um, he, but if you talk to him, he's just, it's amazing. He just wants to win at the highest level as a team. And I think that's why the players love him so much that he just works. I mean, he doesn't, not a big talker, but he's been a lot more verbal this year because he knows he's older and it's probably his time and he feels more comfortable in that role, but you can't outwork this guy and his stuff has been amazing. Um, I, I just, I'm excited for him and his family, uh, but I'm excited for our team because we have him on our, because we have him on our team and that's why he's, you know, been put out there a lot. And excuse me. Uh, I know Kendall hit lead off for you guys, but you might want him in the middle of the order. You might not have an obvious lead off guy right now. Who are some people that might be competing for that number one spot in the order? Um, probably Peyton Stovall, maybe. Um, you know, if we started tomorrow, that's probably who I would hit lead off. He's been swinging the bat extremely well. He's got a good eye. He's a lot stronger than he was last year at this time. And really seeing an improvement of him driving the ball the other way. Um, you know, that's, you know, I, we want Kendall anywhere from two to five in our order, I would say right now. And, uh, you know, it's not, you know, maybe we, in the past, we've had more left-handed hitters in the lineup where we could go four or five, you know, maybe this year it's three. So I don't want to put two of them back to back, you know, at least at the beginning. So, if we go left in the top, we'll go right in the two and then probably, you know, left to right and then left to right. So just try to mix it up at least through the first five as best we can, you know, so later on in the game, they're, they're not getting us getting two for one, bringing in hot shot lefty to get us. So, um, yeah, I, I would say Stovall right now. And other than that, um, I don't, I don't really, I don't know. Holt could hit lead off a little energy to the top, but, uh, you know, we've got a we've got guys that we feel like that are more middle of the order hitters. Dudley. Hey, coach. The uh, obviously you talked a little bit about the polls. Uh, talk to me about the respect it shows for your team to be put up there two and three. You know, having not played a game and all that, and and just you know what you think you have accomplished to be able to you know for people to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think we lost maybe seven starters in the field again, just like we did the previous year and maybe the year before that. And we've, we've been very fortunate that some of the young freshmen have developed into good sophomores and now they're good juniors. Um, you know, guys that maybe didn't play every day last year because of the injury, I think about McLaughlin, you know, that have come in and, and, and really made a jump. And, and our pitching staff, the young guys have gotten better. We've plugged in a portal guy here and there, starter, reliever. Um, and then position player wise through the, the portal, we've gone and gotten a few guys that, you know, looks like they're going to be good players for us. Um, and, and I just think that, you know, the, the polls reflect that a little bit, that they feel like that our pitching is, is good and it's deep. And, uh, there's a lot of potential there with the offense, you know, who's to say how that's going to turn out, but, uh, it's kind of been the same the last couple of years, and then maybe took a step forward this year with returning some really good pitchers and bringing in some really good young freshman pitchers that I truly believe are going to help us this year. And I mentioned a few of their names. I didn't say their roles, but talked about the bullpen a little bit. But these guys are they're going to be starters here one day and maybe a couple of them this year. Also, you like having that uh, four-game series to start off before you all head to Texas? Yeah, I do. I just, like I mentioned earlier, I just feel like that, you know, it, it might wear everybody down a little bit. Um, we hope it can go one day at a time or one game if we have to play a doubleheader. I mean, we could honestly, if we see the weather's great on opening day and then Monday's not looking good at all, we could schedule a doubleheader opening day. I mean, we can always make an adjustment if Saturday and Sunday aren't looking great, but we feel like we're going to have to fight to get one in. Uh, it. It just gives us that option and it gives more pitchers an opportunity to play. You know, maybe another catcher gets in there, uh, position player here and there. Uh, so it's, you know, hopefully we get to that weekend. It's uh, it's good weather or good enough to play games. Thanks. Daniel. Daniel, can you hear me? Oh. Hi, 
Uh, Coach, just one kind of little bit out of left field with practice starting. I mean, I'm just wondering all those years ago, I'm working on a piece about the 80s McClellan teams. Just kind of what were your kind of, as a player, your feelings whenever a season like this started again in the first day of practice? So we're going back to the 80s. All yes. right. You see here. So the 80s uh, reminds me of now a little bit with the mustaches and the long hair. Uh, we had turf at, at, at the ballpark, so and it was freezing there because nothing surrounded it. If it was windy, and it usually was out of the north, it was pretty rough. Uh, but we were all excited to, to play baseball. Uh, I don't know if we had the rules like we do now. I think we could get it going pretty much when we got back to school. They could even bring you in early back then, and you could just start practicing. It's a little different now. It's limited hours up until tomorrow. Um and then, then you get so many hours a week. Uh, but yeah, I think there's, it's not like it's, you know, maybe the feeling of spring training because I don't know, it's not that feeling. It's, it's just, it's college baseball. We know that we're all starting in three weeks and there's a lot of excitement. And then I guess, what are your kind of earliest memories of coach Butler at McClellan and things of that nature? At McClellan when I played there. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I played there as a freshman and a sophomore. We had two really good teams. Went to the Junior College World Series both years. Um, you know, a little different feeling when you're a true freshman. Just first college game, you just you don't know how it's going to go. And I was a starter on a team that was loaded with sophomores. <clears throat> so that was a little bit of stress for me, but it went well. And Coach Butler was a, an outstanding coach. Doug Kilgo was our assistant. He was an outstanding coach. And we won a lot of games, uh, but yeah, I know as a true freshman, I'm sure our guys feel the same way now. A lot of unknowns, a lot of anticipation, a lot of excitement. In some cases, probably the freshman, you know, am I, I going to get to play much? So uh, we just tell those guys to stay strong, keep working. When your name's called, be ready to go. And then you've had McLennan guys over the years on your roster. Just kind of any sentimental value there all these years? <laughs> for moving. <laughs> I would say, you know, a little conversation off the field about living in Waco and playing at McLennan, you know, uh, talking to them about their days there. But I guess that would be the only sentiment, sentiment value. It's all about, you know, now, about playing now and playing well and getting in the lineup. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it puts them a step ahead of anybody. Thanks so much for indulging my blasphemy past. Thanks, Coach. No problem. Good memories. Last one's here. Mason DeGrod. Yeah, Coach, I just wanted to ask you, you know, the way that Hunter Holland performed for y'all last year, just his first year with you, how much confidence does that give you in a guy like Mason Molina coming in and doing something similar? Yeah, I mean, it's easy to, to be confident with guys that have shown it before. Uh, you know, the junior college – it's a different level. You you are facing some good hitters. It's usually not maybe eight eight in the lineup that you're facing, maybe even nine, and always seven good hitters, especially in league play that you got to get through. In junior college, it's it may be maybe maybe three, four, five guys that they're going to fight you a little bit. Um, but if you get pitch like you know you can, you're going to get them out. So it's a different jump as far as going through lineups at this level. But, you know, when you get a Division One transfer, especially a guy that's been at some, pitched at, at a high level like like Mason has, um, and then he goes out and shows us in the fall and he shows our hitters in the fall that he's hard to hit, um, I, I have a lot of confidence in Mason. All right, Bob, our starter, our closer. Hey, 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 Dave. Um, hey, uh, the, the the big lefty from St. Louis. Uh, I get Hockman. How how's he doing? He had Tommy John, right? Hackman. I'm sorry. He didn't have uh, he didn't have Tommy John. He had a little short of that. I forget what they call it right now, but it's uh, not quite so invasive. Um, recover quicker, but uh, he's. I mean, he'll be. He should be healthy enough to throw sometime during the spring as far as live real game 
but but he's not ready to throw in scrimmages. I mean, Adam's working hard. Uh, he's got a big arm, you know. So we we our our hope was that, that he would get on the mound before this season's over. When he'll have to show us he's that he's ready, you know, with how he feels, how he's throwing the baseball, and uh, you know, hopefully he'll do that. But he's he's feeling good. He just got to keep building up. And then you were able to keep your staff intact. That's not always easy when you have success. A lot of times teams teams poach your staff, and I know you probably have to fight off probably SEC teams. Maybe um, just how good is that that you're you're going back in? The, the staff's been together for a while. Yeah, we're very fortunate to keep our staff together. I think we all know each other. We all know how we act in the game and handle the game and. You know, when you have new staff, you have to meet all the time and go over everything. When you have guys you trust and you know that they know what you expect, uh, you don't have to do that as much. And uh, I think they appreciate that so they can spend their time with doing what they like to do. And that's coach pitching and hitting and other things. But, uh, you know, there were a lot of there's teams coming after our coaches, you know, professional teams and other college teams, other division one teams, other teams in the league, you know, it's a, uh, it's a yearly thing. It's a good problem to have. And I think that uh, the players see that we, we have a lot of camaraderie amongst the coaches. We all get along. Um, we all respect each other. Um, there's not, there's not a lot of ego going on with our staff. It's all about let's, let's win what's in front of us today. And, let's try to get to the big dance at the end of the year and, and do some damage. Yeah, I, I think I'm good. You, you going to the basketball game Saturday? I'm not sure yet. Why, you want to sit with me? Uh, you, you have better seat than I do, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I don't, but I, I don't think so. Maybe you now, can come I can get some good seats, but they're not mine. Oh, so I have okay. to make a call or, you know, I have to work on it a little bit. <laughs> okay, I'm good, thanks. Okay, thank you guys.